Over the years, I've wired up lots of network sockets with keystone jacks that have always required you to use a punch-down tool, either a fancy one with built-in cutter like this, or one of these more basic mini ones. That's all well and good if you're wiring up lots of sockets every day in your line of work, but if you're just doing a few for yourself at home, or you don't want to have to carry around and not lose an extra tool, then these toolless keystone jacks could be a better option for you. So to get started, you'll just need a length of network cable for your cable run, the tool-free keystone jacks themselves, a pair of wire strippers, there's one included in this packet, but if yours doesn't come with one, then I'd recommend a pair of automatic wire strippers like these, as they're generally better and you're less likely to damage the wires inside when stripping off the outer jacket. A pair of snips or flush cutters, a good pair of sharp nail scissors might do the job if you don't have any snips or wire cutters handy, but these do work best. And finally, a network cable tester is a very good idea both for peace of mind and for diagnosing any problems if you make a mistake. You'll also need two short patch leads to connect from the wall sockets to each end of the cable tester. There are purchasing links for everything you'll need in the video description, and thanks to VCE for sending the Keystone Jacks cable tester and wall place over for this video. Start by taking your wire cutters and cut however much cable you need for the cable run you'll be working on. Be sure to leave a generous amount of excess, because a couple of centimetres will get chopped from either end, and also because it's always better to have a little bit too much, rather than end up with a cable run that's just a tiny bit too short. Network cable consists of four twisted pairs of wire, so eight wires in total. Cat6 cable usually also has a loose plastic core running down the centre to reduce crosstalk between those four twisted pairs. Each pair is colour-coded, with one of each pair being a solid colour, and the other pays homage to the awful joke I made in one of the other network cable tutorial videos on this channel. Strip about 2cm from the end of the cable, being careful not to damage the conductors inside, and then snip off the plastic crosstalk separator and the ripcord thread that both run along inside the cable. Then untwist all four pairs of wires, the outer jacket that you just stripped off can be useful to help with that. Straighten out all eight wires by pinching them tightly together between your thumb and the back of a pair of pliers or a screwdriver, then running them along like this. Arrange them so that you have the oranges and greens on one side and the blues and the browns on the other side. Next, we'll arrange the colour-coded wires into the correct places inside the connector cap. There are two main wiring standards for network plugs, T568A and T568B. The only difference is the greens and the oranges trade places. There are specific and historic reasons for having those two standards, as well as why you should always use either one or the other, but I won't get into that in this video. The key importance is that the wiring standard used is the same on both ends of the cable run, so if you're just making a length of cable for yourself at home, then it really doesn't make any difference as long as you use the same wiring standard on both ends. I tend to use T568B because it's the most widely used. If you're adding cabling to an existing network setup or replacing a faulty end, then make sure you use whatever standard is already in use at the location to make things easier for yourself and any other engineers who might do work there after you. Unlike with other types of keystone jack, you don't need a punch-down tool for this next step. You just match each wire up with the corresponding colour on the connector cap, and you can see on the top there that it tells you to put the greens on the left side and the oranges on the right side for the B standard, and the other way round for the A standard. Pinch all eight wires into their correct colour-coded places inside the connector cap, threading the oranges and greens round the back and the browns and the blues round the front. Make sure the connect cap is as close to the end of the outer jacket as possible to minimise the length of untwisted wires before they enter, but still leaving enough of a gap to allow the top cap to close properly. Then take your flush cutters and trim the wires so that the ends are flush and not poking out past the plastic ends at all. To finish the job, you just need to insert the connector cap into the keystone jack, making sure to line up the little semicircular insert at the top there, and then close the top cap, pressing down firmly into place, and you're done! It really is that simple! You can now clip the keystone jack into your wall plate or patch panel, and then do exactly the same thing on the other end of the cable, and it should just work perfectly straight away. However, it's a very good idea to test it first with a cable tester like this one, to make sure it's all wired up correctly and to prevent any problems occurring, not just with what you're connecting the cable to, but potentially with your whole network. The network cable tester works by sending a pulse down each wire in turn from the master to the remote. You should see the sequence going from 1 to 8 on both ends, and when it does, you know the cable's wired up correctly. If you get a sequence like this, then you know you've made a mistake somewhere. If it's a long cable run and both Cat5e and Cat6 cable are good for 100 meters, then you can of course separate the master and remote parts of the cable tester and put one at each end of the cable run to test it. 